So this is the idea we are going to use for MIR. I am going to do this before the break. So applications in MIR. Well, MIR means information retrieval. I'm going to focus on three very important applications in MIR that are similarity, classification, and recommendation. So similarity, how two songs are similar or two artists or whatever. For example, here, like in case of Bruno Mars, but they have some kind of similarity. No? <coughs> classification, so put a label, so like general classification or is a uh, classification or different classification, can be done and recommendation. So these three these three tasks have something in common, no? I will explain. So this is in a in a similarity problem, you have in the input you have a matrix of items and features, and then the idea is to get a matrix of items and items, where the sense in the matrix express the similarity between the items. So this is a similarity matrix, and at the beginning you have this uh, matrix of features. And you measure in different ways what are the similarity between the different items and represent as similarity matrix. This is similarity. <coughs> this is classification. No? So we have the <coughs> matrix of items and features, we have a vector of labels for these items, and then we split in training and test, and we try to train a system that is able to learn to give these labels, given the features. And this is recommendation. We have two matrices in recommendation. We have a matrix of items and features, the same matrix of items and features, and we have another matrix here. We have a matrix of items and users, where there is the information whether a user like or not don't, or don't like, or, or like a lot, depends on the problem, an item. And the, the objective here in recommendation is to, uh, well, in this matrix, there are many <coughs> elements that are not known. So we, in this matrix is incomplete. You know some information about some users and some items, but you don't know everything. You don't know if a user may like or may not like all the items <coughs> in the catalog. You only know some of them. So the idea here, you want to predict this, the missing elements in this matrix. So you can use this matrix, this matrix, combine them, but the idea is to learn this. So this is a recommendation. So at the end, we have always a matrix of items and features. And, and this is what we are going to, to see here. So what is an item for us in our problems? Typically in MIR, the features are extracted from the audio, and the items are the, the audio clips. The, the, it's a song, an item can be a song, and the features are extracted from the audio. In our approach, what we are doing is an item is a document. An item can be an artist's biography, or a description of a sound, <coughs> a review of an album, or can be a, a, a history about a song. So a text document that refers to a, an entity. This is an item for us. OK, so what we are going to do is to build matrix of items and features from the document. No? And the, the idea here is, OK, the typical approach for document classification or document similarity or document recommendation, because all of these exist outside the MRI, MIR. So this exists in LP as itself. Document classification, document similarity, document recommendation. So the, the typical uh, approach here is to use what is called a vector space model, but the typical in the past, no, it's not a typical value. You create a feature vector where every feature is a word. You have a vocabulary, you define a vocabulary of 500,000 words or, or 50,000 words. And every feature is one of these words. And you have a, an item is defined with one if it has this word or zero if it doesn't have this word. So this is the vector space model. And this is the bank of word representation. And then you can apply like a weight to these words in terms of the frequency using TFIDF or other more fancy uh, BM25 or whatever to, to, to weight the, the matrix, the, the, the weight of the matrix. So, so this is the typical document based approach. If we can do all these tasks with this. But our, our idea here is okay, we are we have the text and we enrich the text with semantic information 
with this semantic information, we will add uh, this knowledge graph that we explained before. So how to embed this graph into a matrix of features and items? This is the problem here. Once we do that, we can run the same approaches that are used for document classification, document similarity, and everything. So we are focusing on this first. How to embed the graph, the semantic graph information, into a linear vector. So first, let's talk about the concept of h hop and the neighbor to graph. So <coughs> the red points here, imagine, are the items. They can be artists, for example. And the blue nodes are entities that are linked to these items. For example, we perhaps the identity linking on the right of each of artists, and we detect these entities, and we connect them to the, to the nodes, or whatever, we have this graph. So, the neighborhood subgraph is this. So we take the one hop subgraph of every item, is all the nodes that are a one hop from the item. The two hop neighborhood graph is all the nodes that are two hop further from the item. Okay, so this is the idea of the hop. So to do an embedding, we can use many different approaches. There are an infinite kind of embeddings we can do. So we can use the distance from the root from the item to a node. We can use the frequency of the node inside the subgraph. We can use TFIDF of a node inside the whole node. We can count the number of in links that a node has. We can take into account the path that that the different path, the sequence of, of nodes. So there are many ways to, to embed a graph in a linear representation. There's no one fixed way. So we are going to say like three ways that we have used in our approaches and talk about some experiments with this. So first the flat embedding like is the, the, the most straightforward way and it works pretty well. And the application is just like instead of bag of words, a bag of nodes. So we have the graph and each node that there is in the graph has a feature in our feature matrix. So, and, and every item has a, a, a score if it has a, this node or it doesn't have in his neighborhood subgraph. Then we can also apply the FADF or whatever to, to, to reweight this matrix. Another method that we have used is the entity based embedding. So, in this not we want to also measure like the distance from the node to the item. So it's not the same to be in the first uh, level or in the second or in the third. So we can do like a decreasing weight in terms of the distance from the item. Or if a node has like different in links, more in links, perhaps this node is more important. So we can give more weight to these nodes also. So this is, this is the idea of the entity the then we can do also take into account the path, the path, the sequence of nodes that there is in this graph. So this is what we call the path-based embedding. So uh, a subgraph like this may have different paths. This is one path, another path is a path from the leaf nodes to the root. Another, so and a path can be also divided in different subpaths. You can have this subpath, this subpath, and this other subpath inside a path. So at the end, if you take all these possible subpaths, you can uh, associate a feature to every different subpath that it, there exists in the, in the whole graph. So this is another approach. So OK, let's try to illustrate with an example in artist similarity. So remember, we have a matrix of features and items, and then we want to get the matrix of items and items with the similarity between the items. So we can take the neighborhood subgraph of every entry and we can do a flat embedding and simply do Jaka similarity, for example, that is the same that what I we I put here. That is this is like what is the intersection between two subgraphs. So we did an experiment with that in, in last year in, in ISMI. <coughs> so we gathered a corpus of biographies from last FM. Uh, we apply the linking to all the biographies using Barberfy, and we build a knowledge graph, a semantic knowledge graph, an entity graph to every biography. And we also did relational extraction and build a, a graph 
with the relations that we extracted from the bibliographies. <coughs> we did two experiments. So remember, this is the difference. Not this, this sentence, gorillas are uh, this virtual band formed in 1998 by Jenny Alvar of Lur and James Hayward, the creator of comic book Tangle. So an ideal relational structure system would have built this graph. Gorilla is the gorilla is formed by Damon Alba, <coughs> by Jenny Hewell, Damon Alba of Brewer, Damon Hewell, the creator of Tanger. So this is the ideal relation structure. And this would be the graph of entities. So gorillas in the middle and all the entities that were detected are on. So idea, it seems that this graph it has more information, but the problem is that the relation structure system is not able to give you this that good graph. It has some error. So at the end, the performance of this is much better than, than the performance of this whole graph in, in MIR. So we did an experiment with only with a pure text-based approach, with the, the relational structure graph, or the graph of entities, or the semantically enriched graph. So at the end, with the semantically enriched graph, we all performed the text-based approach, and, and it was the, the best one. So another application, the classification. So we have the matrix of item and features, and we have the vector of labels. We want to train the system to predict the labels. So we build a data set that has uh, album reviews from Amazon. <coughs> so they are reviews from the customers. And we have a, we map that to music brands to have more information. So well, at the end, <coughs> we have a data set with 1,300 albums and 13 genres. So the idea is we have the reviews of an album and we want to get what is the genre of this album from the reviews, from the text of the reviews made by Cosmos. So we build several different set of features, textual features, semantic features. So we, we apply entity linking again and, and we do these graphs and, uh, and get information from Wikipedia. To, to be the semantically enriched graphs. We did also some sentiment analysis to get some features related to sentiment. And we also have the acoustic descriptors of the audio, the songs <coughs> of the album, and compare audio classification with the classification. So this is, these are the results. So the audio classification works for general identification, works much worse than if you use text. Text certification have higher scores. This is the pure text approach with about words. <coughs> Get that. And if you if we use semantic information through entity linking to enrich this information and combine with the words, we improve the results. It's in 69. So um, if we use sentiment features, we, we improve a bit, but not very much. So the, yeah, the thing is that the amount of words model is very strong and it works super good. So it is it's really difficult to beat this bank of words model. But okay, if you get some semantic information and, and you, you 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 do some filtering or or you embed it properly, you can improve the the bank of words. This is the conclusion <coughs> matrix combination between the audio tape and the text based approach. So we try to combine audio and text here to see if it improves, but it didn't improve. And the problem is that when the audio based approach, when the text based approach fails, also the audio based approach fails. So if you combine, you, you get worse results than if you use text only. So there is a, a lot of space for research in the combination of text features and audio features. And finally, music recommendation. That is the approach that I, I have worked in the most. So typically in recommendation, there are three approaches to the recommendation. Collaborative filtering, that use only the user matrix content-based recommendation, that use only the item features matrix, and hybrid approaches that takes advantage of both matrices. So we did a reset with an hybrid approach where we concatenate the the item features from the item feature matrix and the item features from the yeah, item user matrix. So we concatenate them and use them to train a model for every user, trying to predict 
the items that were not rated by the user. So this is the idea, and we use semantic information and thinking to build this item features. So we did experiments in two different data sets. One is for sound recommendation from free sound, getting the description of the sounds and the tags, and the other for music recommendation, having description of the songs extracted from song facts, a web with uh, histories about songs, and with information tags for last event. So what we did is we applied entity linking to the description of the sounds and the description of the songs. We build this semantical image graph and we embed them with entity-based embedding and with path-based embedding and then we compare them. So this is the graph, this is the graph that I showed you before. For every sound we have the entities, we have information from Wikipedia, we have information from Warner and so this subgraph describes uh, sound. So these are the results. The results, we get the best results in terms of precision and recall using this entity-based embedding combined with collaborative features. But if we see, there are not that much difference if we use only the user matrix. This is the pure collaborative approach. Or if we use a vector space model that is using combining but with the typical text-based approach that I explained you. Of, or if we use semantic features also. So they are pretty similar, not that much difference. It is a bit better, but not that much. So we use another evaluation measures to measure in which way these semantic features <coughs> are improving the recommendations. So we see what are the entropy-based novelty and the aggregated diversity of the recommendations. So, okay, this means that we are recommending items that the user like, but how diverse are these items? Are we are always recommending the same items or a different range of items? So this is what this measure gives. And so this is the lower the letter and this is the higher the letter. So here there is a bigger difference between semantic approach and non-semantic approach. So the idea is that here we are uh, giving more diverse recommendations and keeping a high accuracy. No? That's the, the, the good result here. And if we see the, the approaches that doesn't use the collaborative information, so it means that don't use the user's item matrix, only the features matrix, you get very bad recommendation, even though your diversity and knowledge is super high. The recommendations are very bad. Uh, so the rest is use collaborative information and combine with item features, and if you use semantic information, you can provide more diversity and novelty in the recommendation. So that, this is the conclusions, and... Okay, last thing we can do is, like Luis explained before, is to explain the recommendation. So, we can ex explain the recommendation if we build a knowledge graph, and we have the entities in this knowledge graph defined, we don't have to compute the recommendation using the knowledge graph. We can compute the recommendation using another approach, using collaborative information, whatever, but if we have a knowledge graph that connects the entities in the graph, we can use them to explain how two entities are related. So we can, ex we can give two kinds of explanations here. We can give an explanation based on the labels of the knowledge base, the labels of the relations, or we can use sentences where entities concur and use the original sentence for, to provide the explanation. So here, for example, we did an experiment, perhaps some of you did because we sent the in with that in the past. So you, have, you may have a recommendation using a sentence, a complete sentence. It doesn't read very well, but say, the Beatles, da, 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 da. So it's a sentence where these two entities appear. So it's the, the original sentence. And here we have a recommendation only using the label of the relation. Like I imagine it's a version of sanctuary. Jump in the file of Metallica was inspired by I don't mind. So like information snippets. And, and there there is a long sentences talking about that. So we did an experiment to compare what what the user preferred. Um, another challenge in the for building an explanation is what is the best path that connects two entities in a knowledge graph because Two entities might be related to many different paths in, in, in the graph. So selecting the best one is a, another challenge. So I don't know if you can 
So we did these experiments, and at the end, we got that using the original sentences is better for, for recommendations. Uh, that's it. Another applications that were these that we applied are question answering and semantic search, but we haven't uh, went into that. So here you have more reference. And there is a supplementary material in the web of the tutorial where there is a Python notebook where you have a, a, that use a, the library that we told before called Elvis for doing entity linking. So I will show you just a brief example of entity linking using Elvis. And then we will go to the break. <laughs>